Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the pressure switch on your washer and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a number two Phillips screwdriver, a large flat blade screwdriver, and a utility knife. Let me show you how we do it. Now the first step in this repair will be to pull the washer far enough forward that we can access the back of the control panel and we'll also need to disconnect the power. Now next we'll remove the knob from the level switch simply slide it off of the shaft, but make sure that the little metal insert is still attached to the knob and not to the shaft. Now next we're going to remove two Phillips screws, one on either end cap, and they're located at the back. You don't need to completely remove them, but back them out enough so that they clear the little nylon insert that is attached to the main top. We'll then just give that console a little bump forward on either side and then you can rotate that console over the back panel and that will expose the pressure switch. Simply pull off the old air dome tube, disconnect the wire harness and then with a flat blade we go in through and just lift up gently on that plastic tab and then rotate the control counterclockwise and remove it control. These four little ears that will fit into that rectangular opening. And this is the little lever that will engage the square hole right beside it. So fit it into the opening. So it's flush and rotate it. So you hear that little locking tab engage, make sure it's seated in properly. You can reconnect the wire harness. So our next step will be to disconnect the lid switch. Just lift up on the retaining tab on the harness and disconnect it. And then with our flat blade screwdriver, we're going to remove these two clips on either side. In the forwardmost opening, there was a bend in that clip that if we engage with our flat blade screwdriver, just pivot it forward and allow it to spring out of the hole. Do the same for the opposite side. And set those aside. Now next we're going to lift that cabinet up at the back, tilt it forward, disengage it from the bottom of the front and set the whole cabinet aside. So you can lift up on the lid a bit, reach in behind, just tilt it forward enough that we can clear the water inlet. Slide it off at the base, and set the cabinet aside. So we'll remove that tubing from the air dome, pull it through the inserts, Now the tubing that was supplied with the kit is a longer length so we'll lay the two of them side by side and we'll cut the new tubing to the exact length of the piece that you're removing. So take the new tubing, hold the old and new together and without stretching them. Measure the length, and then with a nice sharp utility knife, we'll cut that tubing. We can then discard the old tubing, and thread the new tubing through the standoffs. Make sure it's fully inserted onto the air dome on the side of the outer tub, and then attach it to the pressure switch. And again, make sure that it's fully inserted onto the inlet to the pressure switch and we're now ready to put the cabinet back on. Now when reinstalling the cabinet we want to make sure that the lip on the bottom front of the cabinet goes in underneath this crossbar on the frame. You'll also note that there are a couple little metal tabs on the base 
on two on either side that will engage with two slotted openings on the bottom lip of the cabinet. So we need to make sure that those are engaged properly. Now it's easier if you raise the lid because then you can look down inside, and make sure that that cabinet lip goes completely underneath that cross rail. Make sure it's pushed firmly backward. Tuck the water inlet in underneath the back lip. Make sure the cabinet is engaged on both sides. We can then reinstall the mounting clips. Hook that end in under the slotted opening on the back panel. Line it up with the two slotted openings on the main top. And with our flat blade, just apply enough pressure to stretch that bracket enough to fit down into the opening. Do the same on the opposite side. And if you have to, you can give it a little bump. Make sure it's properly engaged. Remember to reconnect the lid switch harness and that the locking tab engages on the switch. You can then rotate the console forward and we're going to line up these plastic hooks on each end cap with the matching openings in the main top. Make sure to seat it flat and then pull it backwards. We'll tighten up the Phillips screws in the corners. We'll reinstall the knob. We're now ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.